So again, looking at um, this topic five of our sources of energy effective physical performance, I'm looking at acute, acute responses to exercise. Um, so what we'll do is we'll I'll show you a short um, video uh, that's a fairly common um, VCE video, um, and then that'll take you through um, an overview. Then we'll sort of look more specifically at, at some of the things that we can cover in that acute response. When the body is exercising, a number of acute responses occur in the respiratory system. The muscles require more oxygen. The heart rate increases, which means that a greater volume of oxygenated blood is transported to the working muscles. To provide the increased oxygen, ventilation or the rate of breathing increases. At rest, a person typically takes around 12 to 15 breaths per minute. This can increase to three or four times that rate during certain types of exercise, such as running a 400 or 800 metre event. Muscles require oxygen um, to sustain work levels over a long period of time. And so in order to um, ensure that there's enough oxygen going to your working muscles, your respiratory rate will increase through the exercise uh, session. And obviously the increase in respiratory rate therefore increases the oxygen um, that enters the, the, the uh, system. Tidal volume also increases. This refers to the amount of air taken in and out with each breath. At rest, tidal volume is typically around 0.5 litres, but can increase to five times that amount during strenuous exercise. Tidal volume is the amount of air that's inspired uh, per breath, and in response to exercise it, it increases, tidal volume increases. As we take deeper breaths there is more air that's taken in, so the tidal volume increases as we exercise up to a maximum uh, amount. Ventilation is the product of uh, respiratory rate and tidal volume, tidal volume being the amount of uh, air that we take in per breath and respiratory rate the number of breaths per minute and in response to exercise that increases linearly up to a maximum amount. Breathing rate and tidal volume are controlled by the respiratory centre in the brain which actually responds to the amount of carbon dioxide in the blood. Because more carbon dioxide is created by muscles during exercise, there is a greater percentage in the blood. Responding to this, the brain stimulates the body to inhale deeper and more often, which ultimately provides more oxygen to the muscles. Both in the muscles and lungs, there is greater gaseous exchange and diffusion. During exercise, the diffusion of gases increases because the, there is a higher concentration of oxygen at the alveoli and a higher concentration of carbon dioxide in the capillaries and they will move in opposite directions. Oxygen uptake, also known as VO2, increases with exercise. At rest, the average VO2 is around 0.25 litres of oxygen per minute, although there are several factors that affect this, such as body size. As you start exercising, VO2 increases as more oxygen is taken up and more aerobic energy is used. There is a linear relationship between intensity of exercise and oxygen intake. That is, until the maximum use of oxygen is reached, which is known as VO2 maximum. We'll talk about VO2 maximum when we look at chronic adaptations later in the program. As the body exercises, more oxygen is required. Ventilation or breathing rate increases and tidal volume increases. Breathing rate and tidal volume are controlled by the respiratory centre in the brain. Higher breathing rates and tidal volumes lead to greater gaseous diffusion in the lungs. Oxygen uptake, or VO2, increases in response to exercise. So the video there primarily looked at sort of your respiratory, respiratory changes, um, but we've also got 
things that are happening immediately in terms of our circulatory and with our muscles and the associated structures there. Again, we, we should know a lot of it, but it's good to be able to, to touch up on it. So um, we show here the, the relation between heart rate increasing and um, stroke volume increasing. So um, through the workload there as well. We'll try to stick more to the theoretical stuff. So acute responses, we'll find that we'll have an increased breathing rate, tidal volume, oxygen uptake. Again, if you want to pause and read, you can as we go through the video. Um, lung diffusion and ventilation won't, won't change. Those sorts of things would change with a chronic response, but immediately your lung diffusion capabilities are not going to change. So you will be able to diffuse as much oxygen as you can at that point. All right. Um, we can also look at our cardiac output, um, our heart rate changes, our blood flow to working muscles will obviously get an increase. Our stroke volume, um, uh, we won't see much change. But with our heart rate, we'll obviously um, there'll be an increased demands. So with our cardiac output, um, we would have a heart rate pump out more blood per minute to meet the, the needs of the muscles. Um, and our stroke volume would increase, um, pump out more blood per meat to, to meet the needs, needs of the muscles, so that would increase slightly. Um, our blood pressure there as well um, changes, so we obviously have an increase in blood pressure as we have more um, oxygen going around. Again, we've talked about the health. Um, increase in blood pressure as a health risk comes from having a high heart rate all the time which means um, that we're not you know, as efficient with our oxygen delivery. But in terms of when we initially start to exercise, blood pressure will obviously increase because we have more blood flow around the body. All right, in terms of uh, our muscles, um, we have an increase in our motor unit activity. So we have um, more um, brain activity towards muscle to get that work. We have a, an increase in muscle fiber recruitment, so the force needed to engage in the activity increases. Muscle enzyme activity increases. All right, so there's more chemical reactions around the um, contraction of the muscles, and the muscle fuel stores decrease. So we know that the um, PC and the glycogen, the fatty acids, will be depleted due to um, us working in those systems. Uh, we'll see an increase in the muscle temperature. So greater friction through the greater increase of work rate, and we'll see definitely a greater ABO2 difference. So that means that we, um, if we have a greater ABO2 difference, we see more oxygen actually being delivered to the muscles, um, which is a result of a lot of different chronic adaptations. So we can see here an explanation of a bit more detail about that ABO2 difference. If you would like to use that, you can. So we can see here a bit of a case study looking at the acute responses during a running test. So this diagram shows the heart rate of a trained athlete during a test of changing intensity or work over time. So we can see there from the start of the test, we go from sort of 60 beats per minute as we go up to 140, that first part, um, looking at that oxygen deficit stage. Then when we get to B, we're looking at, looking at B there being um, a steady state. So we're looking at um, where the oxygen needs are meeting oxygen demands. Then from C to D, we can see a real spike in the activity, um, which is probably looking at OBLA, uh, moving past our lactate threshold. And then from D down to here, where we get back down to 60, we're looking at our, um, our epoch stage. So it says identify two acute responses that occur during A on the graph. So this can be any one of the tables on page 35 to 37 in the text in an exam answer it require one from each system. So what do we think? We would have an increased heart rate. All right, we, because we have an increased heart rate, we'd have an increased cardiac output. We would probably have um, OBLA happen because we have that spike in heart rate there. We will probably have um, decrease in fuel stores because we're working um, anaerobically, so anything like that. Identify the phenomenon seen in line B. So what do we think there? Oxygen made, oxygen needs many oxygen demands. We don't have any spike in heart rate, therefore it's constant for some time, so it's a steady state. 
Identify and explain the point of the run where fat would become the dominant energy system during the here. Well, I would say it would probably be here. Um, and we'd like to use oxygen down here to be able to recover. So the activity goes for only 15 minutes. Although fat is responsible for some energy, release is not a dominant supplier because the length of activity is too short. Carbohydrate would be the dominant source. Um, for any bit of aerobic too, but if we're going to talk, like if we don't want to be tricked by a question, we want to talk aerobically, fat would be dominant sources in that um, epoch stage or that steady state. Explain three acute responses seen from point C to D. So here um, in the systems indicated. So we're looking here again, one of any in one of those. So again, we're increased heart rate. We see an increased breathing rate, we probably see an increased perspiration rate, probably see OBLA, um, we'll probably see um, muscle enzyme activity, we'll probably see increased motor unit recruitment, all those sorts of things. All right, explain the acute responses um, and during this time after exercise. So they would decrease over time because recovery would occur. So a heart rate would lower during this, a breathing rate would lower during this stage. A stroke volume would lower during this stage. A cardiac output would lower during that stage. So all those sorts of things would happen there. All right, so acute responses, there's some revision. Make sure you utilize this source, um, do some questions. If you, Again, we've got lots of resources to be able to plan for this exam.